I love complexity. Thank you for the image of the complexity surfer. I love doing that. Let's talk about that later. Um, I love breaking rules. I'm a hacker. Uh, I love breaking models, too. I love breaking or showing the limitations of simplification of complexity. And I love people. And my understanding is that a lack of trust is what creates all of these simplifications of complexity and all of the fearful behavior around dealing with it. So I'm a trust artist. I can help you trust yourself and reduce politics in organizations. What do I mean with politics? Could you please all get up? Politics <clears throat> is the time and energy you spend on covering your ass instead of focusing on results. So my question is, in your company, do you imagine the average percentage of people's time and energy, uh, of people making sure they look good, that some things is not their fault, that uh, they're covering up bad news or creating the kind of lies that people want to hear? Does it take up less than 20% of people's time? Sit down. Less than 50? Less than 80? Okay, the last time two people were still standing. We need processes and roles for only this single reason. Only to make sure it's someone else's fault. We don't need processes and rules as soon as we trust each other. Why do we want that? We want effectiveness, but effectiveness is kind of scary. Um, open communication, opening up to other people is something we don't really learn anywhere. Um, so how can we focus all our energy on impact? on results. How can we be wholehearted at work? How can we be wholehearted anywhere? How can we create places, organizations, societies where we would love to belong? Where we can really be open and honest and authentic all the time to have fully effective communication all the time? Where we could have full loyalty of our staff for loyalty of our customers who come back because they love us, not because just our service is cheaper than somebody else's service or our product is slightly better this time than the competitors, right? So how do we create this world of connection? And what's blocking us from it? I already said it, it's fear. We don't dare to be fully present. When we grow up, we quickly learn that showing ourselves to other people does not always make us successful. It sometimes causes us pain because people like us or are less likely to like us. We become scared to stand out. And we learn that fitting in is so much easier. And in the last century, fitting in was a very successful business strategy, right? Being a good wheel in a well-oiled machine of an organization. <clears throat> so our parents teach us this is what you need to do. Um, we learn very quickly when we grow up to sacrifice our authentic self for attachment. To be loved, to be liked, to be successful or to survive. So we kind of bend ourselves into roles depending on the systems we interact with and <clears throat> we, we create a lot of pain. And one way that I found that actually helps people in this kind of pain and that's helped me, that's how I learned it, is that when we co-ache with each other, when we co-suffer, in German we say geteiltes Leid is halbes Leid, right? Shared pain is half the pain. And we can start sharing our stories and changing our stories to sh change our interpretation of reality, to change our perception of reality, and to let go of the habits and behaviors that we took on because they made us successful, because we fulfilled somebody's expe expectations. So what can we actually do to come out of this mess? Some ideas, some methods. Hero feedback. Somebody actually once told me I'm like Gandalf, because I told a manager, you are like the nourisher Tuk. Um, and I was not scared to tell that manager that he was trying to do something stupid. Temenos is a method I love. It's a workshop where you can discover your authentic self, where you can learn how you bent into these roles, and where you can discover and decide 
which of these roles, with which of these habits, which of these behaviors you might want to let go of. Um, it's one method, among others, where we share personal information to increase the bandwidth we use in communication. Um, and, like, when I give somebody a business card, I get a business card back. When I share something about myself, I learn something about myself back. That's very interesting. Checking in is an interesting technique. We learned that yesterday in the uh, Marcos uh, Lean meeting session. Uh, if you practice disclosing yourself, tell people a little and a little and a little more every day about how you feel, what's going on inside you, what's important for you. If you share personal stuff, amazing things happen when people start interacting more intensively. They learn how to ask for help. We usually ask for help when we are stuck way too late. Right? Last responsible moment, weeks ago. Right? I spent so much, wa wasted so much time, I'm stuck. If we ask for help when we don't have a problem yet, we might get a much better solution for our problem. If you are in a position where you have impact on other people's behavior because you're a kind of leader person, you don't need to be a manager. It could be just an interesting guy that people look up to because you're a little older, a little wiser, a little whatever. Right? People do these kind of things. Try to be an authentic example. And the bottleneck, it's in the mirror. Look at yourself. You have a choice. You have a choice to start being more authentic, being more yourself, being more open today. And trust me, very, very little steps. You may still feel safe. They will give you so much back. Thank you very much.